Welcome to Star Citizen and the Gentleman News. And as usual, we analyze all the latest information in detail and summarize it for you. With producer Stephanie Bedford begins Origin Stories, a new ongoing series in which CIG employees regularly introduce themselves and tell their own stories. Stephanie worked for PlayStation after graduating from university until she joined CIG about a year ago. Her first project as a producer here was the Nova Tank and she is currently working on an equally exciting topic, which is also our introduction to today's news. The Crusader Ares series With the Crusader Ares series, which will be released soon, we can expect another ship from the Spaceship Forge Crusader, whereby this is a dedicated fighter which will pose a direct threat against larger targets with its non-interchangeable size 7 armament, either as an energy weapon with the iron or the ballistic variant with the inferno variant. Progress in polishing the current grey box phase is clearly visible here, even if there is obviously no pilot of the controls yet. The Ares fills a gap between the existing fighters and the capital ships, which is why this series will be particularly exciting. But there was also news about the Drake Vulture, which is currently in the white box phase after the concept phase. Here we can expect a single seat salvaging ship, which is presumably also usher in the salvaging gameplay with its appearance. Furthermore, for the salvaging mechanics, necessary tools for players are also in active development and are expected soon. And an announcement for further dedicated salvaging ships besides the Vulture or the already released Reclaimer is to be expected. Also the bomber version of the Starlifter series, the A2, which was presented in an advanced status, shows the bomb operator room as well as the bomb mechanism located in the rear area. And also the massive ordnance bombs, which strongly resemble current bunker busters we could take a closer look at. And according to the description of CIG, it is size 3 in this bomb category. And after the CitizenCon is in direct reach at the beginning of October, there were two sprint reports, which we also summarize and analyze for you. The refueling mechanics is on a good way, whereby we could already take a first view with a deployable refueling arm on the MISC Starfarer. Here the docking model of the Constellation series with its snap fighter is used to dock onto the Starfarer's refueling nozzle and ultimately carry out the refueling process. So nothing stands in the way for a first version of the refueling mechanics and we can go refueling in-game this year. But also the bomb mechanic was shown in more detail, where at first simply the ignition stage of the rockets was deactivated and these serve as bombs following gravity. And here the developers have chosen the name for these misappropriated rockets with I'm currently a bomb, very good. Due to the available and extensive physics simulation which is already implemented in the game, this makeshift bomb mechanic apparently already works very well and seems comprehensible, which makes a punctual appearance of this feature seems realistic. Now it would only be necessary to also implement gameplay and mechanics into the game that make bombing necessary, otherwise I can already see various jokers bombing players at launch. So the next big PvP heroes. In any case, with the bombing mechanic, the upcoming outposts as well as the corresponding vehicles, there is enough potential to create enough gameplay here. Visual effects due to various influences on the player were also an interesting demonstration under which here in addition to G-forces, drugs and medication influence, alcohol or even radiation should fall. However, it is interesting to see whether these visual effects will also be used in the outdoor view after it has been completely free of negative effects so far.
also to the with the 3.15 appearing Aegis Redeemer, there were further insights into the last work phases. Here we were shown different areas in the interior, as well as turrets. The entrance in the rear was also given a closer look, with an Aegis typical military design clearly visible. There were no surprises or even changes to be seen, so it can be assumed that the punctual release of this crowd pleaser will be kept. And according to the information available so far, the Redeemer will be one of the most versatile and powerful ships in this size. I'm really looking forward to the release of the Aegis Redeemer with version 3.15 and of course to a first test flight. With the Crusader showroom, which we will find in the future in the landing zone horizon on the gas planet Crusader, we can expect a kind of ship museum from Crusader Industries. Here we will find all Crusader models, although we have not yet been able to discover the Starliner variant on the material we have so far. But since the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo will also take place on Horizon this year, it can be assumed that the exhibition halls will also be located in this area and we will therefore be able to take a closer look on this area before the end of the year. And with current impressions from the system Nix, whereby we with Delamar and the landing zone Levski, there an old acquaintance again will see, we come to the second part of the news, whereby we find here extensive news from the most diverse ranges. Due to the experiences from the so far created Planet Tech versions, it was possible for the creation of Nix Empire to fall back directly on an extended version, which is why the surfaces and structures appear much more organic than before. Therefore, it is to be expected that the coming systems directly with an optical extension can come up, and we will find here some new biomes and landscapes. The structures shown so far are in any case already very promising and make a clearly advanced impression. But as promised, we come to the roadmap report. In the current roadmap report, there were some innovations and informations which we analyze step by step as usual. In the AI area, the extensive data of the motion capture shot is currently still being processed. The vendor as well as the implementation of coffee shops are currently in focus, so similar to the bartender, we will soon be able to place our orders in the coffee sector. Work on improved female character models is well advanced. Doctors and nurses with appropriate medical behavior are already polishing. This involves a doctor reacting to the player, reappearing or entering a room. Bugs for 3.14 have been fixed, focusing on Orison's Voyager bar. Pre-production of future behaviors has begun, initially for outposts and hospitals. NPC, perception and reaction settings were revised to give designers more control over how the AI behaves. In addition, a basic combat behavior was reworked to ensure that cover selection work is intended. The team also worked on certain behaviors that allow the AI to spread out, surround the player and taunt him in close combat. Meal behaviors were also reworked to ensure that the AI quickly moves into combat when the situation calls for it. Finally, the animators continue to work on the AI's crouching down and surrendering. The tech team improved the planetary navigation system for planetary wayfinding. NPCs are enabled to push a cart along a path. This sounds simple, but there are countless animations and variables that affect it. The behavior of quantum travel in a group have been improved. Now the group leader check if all participants have finished spooling before sending the signal to jump. The development of the subsumption editor has been continued. For more information on this extensive topic, see the, the Dynamic Universe video here in the channel. The animation team worked on how the better use existing elements such as for the prisons, the medical facilities, the settlements, the casaba stores and the bar. The art team designed new armor for the Pledge Store as well as for subscribers. The team began designing cybernetics and created new outfits for the store owners and pyro residents. 
Further, medical clothing and the medical skeleton were created. The backpacks mentioned in the last update were also completed, including making sure they appear correctly on the characters and in the stores. Pyro's planets and moons have been upgraded to the expected quality standard. The Rest Sub Clinics and the Grim Hex Clinic have been improved. Rest Sub Clinics are module based, with many Rest Subs being equipped with a limited number of medical modules. Area 18 and Lorville's hospitals are nearing completion. Further, work has been done on the creation and placement of puzzles on abandoned or crashed spaceships mentioned in the last update. These puzzles will eventually be scattered across planets and space and will be minor points of interest. They are currently in the proof-of-concept phase, with the team exploring various future possibilities. The Constellation Tauros has been released. Bugs affecting various ships in the fleet were also fixed. The Crusader Ares variants are in the final phase. The Drake Vulture went through the white box phase, an entirely new vehicle was added to the pipeline. And a popular variant of an existing ship series mentioned in the last report already went into the grey box phase. The Redeemer received a final polishing. The interior with the cockpit, gun turrets and lower levels are nearing completion. A new, not yet announced vehicle, that the team is looking forward to, was transferred from the white box to the grey box. The Sabre's cockpit and lightning for the gold level were completed. On the Retaliator, the first round of gold standard interior work was completed. New compartments for the ship items were added and the cockpit also received a makeover. And yet another unannounced ship is deep in the grey box phase. Finally, work has begun on a fuel arm for the MISC Starfarer to enable the refueling function. The weapons team completed the size 7 armament for the Crusader RE series. And work also began on the new size 3 bomb for the A2 Starlifter, as well as a variant of mounted weapon turrets for an upcoming ship. The audio team worked on the Grimhex Medical Center, effects for the A2 Starlifter and improvements to the dogfight and ship weapons. Work continued on the Orison music by Pedro Camacho. In addition, the sound for the Arizai Constellation Taurus trailer was created. In the engine area, some improvements were made, which result in savings in memory and bandwidth. New code was written, which leads to CPU optimization. In the renderer, the team continued to transition to Generation 12. Improvements were made to volumetric clouds and atmospheric rendering. The features team is continued to work to the new player inventory. One main aspect in which the new player inventory differs in the limitation of physical space and location. While the different landing zones provide the player with a generous amount of storage space, anything left in one location cannot be accessed from another. Thus the player must make sure to store all the items they need in their backpack or vehicle. Items purchased in stores will also be moved to the local warehouse. Solving the problem of NPCs standing on chairs and benches is still an issue. Working on the Knickknack system, which is the MobiGlass app for managing player equipment, Knickknack is scheduled for release with Alpha 3.15. Gameplay features continue to focus on the latest dynamic event, the Ninetales Lockdown. Work again on setting up new stores on Orison, as well as the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2951 Exhibit Hall. The loot creation system was worked on as well. The vehicle's feature team is still focusing on balancing the ships and weapons. The new ship huts continue to be developed. The development of jump points was also continued. In the graphics and VFX programming area improvements were made to the quality of the hair rendering. Several bugs were fixed and some of the Gen 12 features and requirements were prepared. Work continued on the Colonial Outposts and Hospitals Lightning for Lawville and Grimhex. Finally, atmospheric and color correction for Pyro's planets and moons began and lightning of Pyro's jump point gas cloud progressed. Extensive text was created for the various NPC types encountered in new locations. Systemic services and tools continue development of Quantum, the economic and AI simulation. More about the topic? in the Dynamic Universe video in the channel.
Turbulent, the game service team continues to work on server meshing. An automation mechanism was created to facilitate and expedite making sure players have the correct items in their accounts. UI screens for the upcoming hospitals and medical gameplay were created. Radar ping and scan functions have been improved, especially when searching for hard-to-find objects in space, distant spaceships, mineable materials and other raw materials. In addition, preparations have begun to extend these features to first-person gameplay, where players can look for hidden lifeforms on foot and scan for important mission-related information. Finally, work has begun of displaying player-emitted signatures and environmental levels around their vehicles in the HUD. This gives players an idea of how well they are detected and how well they can detect others. I hope you enjoyed the video and leave me a like and maybe even a subscribe here. The Digital Citizen Con casts its shadows ahead and the announcements become more and more clear. It remains to be seen if all features will be released on time after the current version 3.14 already had some delays and problems. However, we are optimistic, since there are a lot of features that are to come and since the postponement of individual areas would be to get over. But as always I'm interested in your opinions on the topic. Feel free to write me in the comments, in the Discord or in the almost daily Twitch livestreams. And as always, the most important at the end, the big thank you to all Patreons, channel members and Twitch subscribers. Without you, this would not be possible in this form. You are a huge motivation. Thank you for your support, guys. You definitely rock. And of course, there will be extensive giveaways again this month. How you can participate and what to expect, you can see in the following announcement trailer. I say goodbye until next time. See you soon. And as always, see you in the verse.